I was in the middle of, of comparing the DSA 815 with the Instec GSP 730 spectrum analyzers when this Siglent oscilloscope arrived. It is an SDS 1102X. It's the new uh, uh, variable persistence low-end Siglent oscilloscope, uh, 100 megahertz. And I have wanted for some time to compare it with the Rigol DS, in, in this case, uh, this is an MSO, but the other, the comparable model would be the DS1104Z uh, by Rigol, which I don't have the 1100, which is the 100 megahertz. Instead, I have the MSO version, which is the 70 megahertz. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to be doing the comparison with a focus on certain lab experiments, primarily lab experiments that are done in graduate and undergraduate uh, university labs, teaching students to use equipment and giving them a practical information about their uh, uh, what they're learning in the theory classes. Uh, in doing that, I'm going to be using a couple of devices that are made by Rigol and Siglent, respectively. On the left is a device that's been around for a while. It's a DS6000 uh, demo board. And on the right is a device, I'm not sure how long this has been around, a little bit simpler and a little bit cheaper, made by Siglent, which is basically an oscilloscope demonstration board that they make. I thought I would use both of them because that way there's less chance that uh, that I might have a test set up that favors one or the other unit. So what's, uh, what's my basic focus here? Well, in general, most labs these days focus either on analog, digital, or RF. Occasionally, you have mixed signal labs where you use a mixed signal oscilloscope where you have digital and analog and you convert between the two and process. More recently, RF embedded systems have begun to be introduced and there are a new class of instruments called mixed domain oscilloscopes that attempt to address that. These are fairly expensive at this point, and I certainly can't afford to buy one just for the purpose of evaluating, so I won't be looking at MDOs. I may at some point in the future look at MSOs, but right now my main focus is on looking at digital circuits and particularly the use of oscilloscopes in uh, in debugging designs and understanding how uh, various kinds of digital logic works. What I'm going to be uh, dividing this up into is an overall section and then each of these vertical, horizontal, the acquisition interface, the triggering options, the kind of decoding available, measurement, the math, uh, which is related to measurement, but it usually means uh, math operations performed between two channels, and usually that also includes a fast Fourier transform, and then the display characteristics. So let's take a look at that with regard to these two scopes, and I've kind of prepared an overview. The Rigol and the Siglent are basically the same in the same class, at least I think so. Now, Dave Jones on EEV blog has already compared the Siglent to the Rigol 2000, at least in a kind of pre-review sense. Uh, I'm going to be comparing it to the Rigol 1000 Z series. That series has a 7 inch 800 by 480, and you see here the Siglent 8 inch. There's a slight difference in memory depth, but frankly that's not in my opinion, uh, very, very serious. Uh, there is a significant difference in the waveform updates, but 
you should understand that most of those are uh, their marketing numbers more than engineering numbers. The main difference is the uh, Rigol comes with four channels, the Siglent with two, and as you'll see a little later, the Siglent comes with some options that the Rigol you have to pay for. They both are one gig a sample per second, and they both have variable persistence. The sensitivity of the Siglent is uh, uh, 500 microvolts as compared to a millivolt per division on the Rigol. And here is the basic pricing. Siglent doesn't have a 50 or 70 megahertz version. The first one that is directly comparable is the 100 megahertz. And there, the prices that I got just this morning off the internet, the Rigol costs 830, the Siglent costs 499. There also is a 200 megahertz version of the Siglent available, but because of the sample rate, and you can uh, watch uh, Dave Jones' EEV blog uh, on this, because of the sample rate, I frankly would not buy the, the 200 megahertz version because you can't really use two channels at a time like that. Here are the options. As you see, the trigger options are included with the Siglent, but cost 191 for the uh, Rigol. The decode is uh, extra in both and about the same price. The memory, I could not find a memory extension on the Siglent. There may be one available, so I just put X's there. The record function is $146 with the Rigol. It's included with the Siglent. The 50 ohm terminations, you can buy extra terminations for $18 a channel. They, they look like this uh, from Rigol, but they are included in the uh, uh, inside the Siglent instrument. You can just turn them on. And finally, there the logic analysis, and I've misspelled logic over there, is adds about $368, at least at the 70 megahertz level. I could not find a mixed signal version of the Siglent available. So that's basically the overall view, and I'm going to end this video at this point and pick up the next video looking at the uh, uh, more detailed specs of the two units, and we'll start doing some experiments.